Okay, let's learn a couple more functions. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and comment these sections out so we don't have to keep entering that information. Uh, we're going to work with the find function and the replace function. And down here in a comment, I have put uh, some text so that we can just copy paste it. I want to create a new string. So, uh, and I'll just call this string story. I'm going to, so right, we do the type, which is string, and then the name of the object, which is story. And I'm going to go ahead and give it an initial value. And the value I'm going to give it is this string right here. So down here, notice that this is long. In fact, it's too long to fit on one line and still be within that 80 character limit. Uh, by the way, that's just a really classic style guideline for lots and lots of languages is just don't have your lines be longer than 80 characters. So in my editor, I've got a marker there that tells me where 80 characters is. And I've got my formatting set up to automatically not extend um, past that 80 character mark. Now notice that this long string, I can put it on two lines. And the way that I do that is use double quotes again. So I, I end it with a double quote and then just start again with a double quote. Now I don't put anything between this double quote and that double quote. You can put white space, it'll ignore that, but you don't put any kind of operator, no semicolon, uh, no plus sign, and it's just a single string, but it just extends over multiple lines. So you can do that for long lines. Okay, so there I've defined this string, and inside this string somewhere, there's uh, Waldo's hiding. So we want to find Waldo, so we're going to use uh, a string. So I'm just going to print this out. I'm going to call a function, just print out the information, and I'm going to say that Waldo, let's see if we can find Waldo is at location, and that's what find tells us, is it tells us the location. Now remember how we use this. We do it the object, and here the object is story, right? That's the variable name, or the object name. So the, the object that I want to use is story, and then the method, dot method, and the method is find. And now the parameter that we want to send to find is what we're looking for, and that is Waldo. So we're looking for this, and we can find out, is it there? And it'll print that out and we can print endo. Okay, let's see if it's if it can find it. Oh, my editor's complaining because I didn't put a semicolon. It is so fussy. All right, there, things lined up again. Editors help us a lot to preempt errors. They can find them for us. So I'm going to build this, and there it goes. It says Waldo is at location 90. And if we look in this string, if you counted all of those, Waldo would be at character number 90. Remember they start with zero, so location 90 is right there. And that's where Waldo starts, so you can find it. And, and that's a find, so if you wanna find a string, uh, you can do that. Now it's case sensitive, watch what happens when I do here, and run it again. It gives me this really, really huge number, um, and that's really saying no position, end position, it's a different type. Uh, I'm just printing it out, and so I'm getting this funny information. It says, oh, I didn't find it. So it didn't find Waldo, but it finds it with the lowercase. So it's, it's case sensitive. Each character's its own character, right? So that's important to know that. Well, then there's a replace. So now if I want to replace Waldo, it's like, okay, Waldo doesn't really belong in there. He's just hiding in there. So I really want to replace that with nothing and that way it'll, it'll go away. So to do that, I need to use a different function, and that is, and I'm going to print out the whole story now so we can see what it looks like the way it is. And then I'm gonna make a change and print it out again. So now the function that I wanna use is replace. Again, I use the object, so I wanna use the story string, story.replace, and now replace says, tell me where to begin the replace. Okay, so where in the string do you want to begin? Well, I want to begin where Waldo is. Now, we ran that, and we know it's at 90, but, but we don't want to have to run it, print it out, and then use it. So we can actually just say here, find will tell us the position. So the first parameter is the position, 
where you're starting the replace. The second parameter is how many characters to replace. And so I want to replace W-A-L-D-O and the space because I don't need both those spaces. So I want to replace those six characters. So I'm going to put those six characters. Then the third parameter is what do you want to replace it with? And I want to replace it with nothing, the empty string. So I use an empty string. But if I want to replace it with George or Sally or Sarah or Beverly or Kim or John, I could put that in there, right? So I could replace it. And I just want to replace it with empty. So I'm going to just do that. And then I'm going to print the story out again so we can see the change that was made and see if it actually made a change to that string. So here we go. And there we are. The dragons are flying over the mountains. They're hunting for a place to settle for. And there's Waldo has been replaced with an empty string. And we were able to find Waldo and replace it. Two more functions.